From the north side of the San Francisco Bay to Singapore, welcome to Urban X Real Talk Fitness Radio with your host, business owner, lecturer, author, master trainer, Tiaja, with over 30 years of experience in the health and fitness industry. He will challenge the fitness between your ears. So prepare your mind, body, and soul for the revolution of self-care, the evolution of fit, with real talk about real people, real health, real fitness, and the real deal behind our present illness culture. Real talk every time, all the time. Get weekly insights on how to shift your thinking, emoting, eating, training, hydrating, goal setting, and resting for you, the everyday athlete. You can cheat your fitness, but you can't steal your health flow. It's Tuesday, 9 a.m. Let's flow. Welcome to Urban X Real Talk Fitness Radio, where we challenge the fitness between your ears. I'm your host, Yaja. I'm going to do something a little different today. I'm going to tell you a story. It's a story about you. Now, how is that possible when I don't know you? Well, it's possible because after training thousands of people, particularly those who came to me to lose weight, which is, by the way, the number one reason for hiring a trainer, their stories are very similar. I'm going to employ my psych background, as I often do with clients, and share with you my analysis of the story. When most people share their stories with me, they usually are chronicling their failed attempts, not their failed attempts at dieting or exercising consistently, but to give meaning as to why they became overweight to begin with, as if anyone can ever accurately assess such a thing, and why not, you ask? Because gaining weight is not a zero-sum game, meaning you don't gain weight overnight, nor do you lose it that way. It takes days and weeks and months and years to introduce and initiate that kind of extreme imbalance to your body. It starts out as a negotiation, slowly transitions into initiation, then intention as far as the body is concerned. And just a side note, the body will slowly adapt to any changes you initiate because it's always trying to maintain a state of homeostasis. But after so many months and years of adaptation, it will not only adapt, it will adopt your overtures as its new survival paradigm, even when it contradicts what it knows you need. Contrary to popular belief, the stories people tell about their weight are not stories of justification, why they're that way, or even masking stories, hiding behind excuses why they're that way. But rather, most people's stories are carefully scripted narratives written by their unconscious minds to protect their conscious brain from knowing their painful truth. I had to take many clients all the way back to a childhood experience before we could get to the crux of the weight impulse journey. So today I'm going to tell you a story. Once upon a time there was a woman named Mary who had a boyfriend named Gary who left her for another because he thought she was better. What Gary did had nothing to do with her emotional skid. Still she blamed herself while accusing him of emotional theft. Now her weight and self-loathing are all she has left. Today will be just another day unless you decide today that it won't be. It is Tuesday, March 26, 2019. Let's flow. Mary was overweight by all known metrics. She stood 5 feet 4 inches tall and had a naturally curvy frame. Most people wouldn't consider her obese, but none of that mattered because she did. She once confided in me that she hated herself. When I asked her, did you mean you hate yourself because of the weight, she never responded. Now why do you think she never responded? Do you believe she actually hated herself? When people say things like that, what are they really trying to communicate to us? to themselves. What I've always found fascinating is the fact that the mind may lie and conjure up a reality to protect us from some negative experience in our past, but the body never lies. Sometimes a person's extra pounds has more to do with what's between their ears than it does to do with what's on their plate. And this is the very reason I train people from the inside out rather than the other way around. So you can eat kale every night and it might as well be Kit Kat bars if your body is suppressed by a lie. In Mary's case, that's precisely what was happening. As a teen, she had been molested by a family member. Her only mistake was that she thought she could successfully bury her horrible experience. She couldn't. Well, she had for most of her life, but something changed. Neurologically, we are wired to hear the things that make us feel good about ourselves. So unbeknownst to Mary, she was throwing up all these red flags when she began our conversation that day with 
with, I hate myself. Now I can't begin to tell you how many times I've had female clients share similar stories with me. As a proud dad of two beautiful young daughters, I can say unequivocally how angry it makes me to hear such things and how much it breaks my heart for that person. And though personal trainers are supposed to maintain some professional neutrality, I never could, not in these cases. Whatever triggered Mary's memory of her past was also causing her to build a wall around her social self. In her case, that's precisely what her weight gain represented. It was her way of protecting herself from any more pain and in her mind, sexual advances, thus disaffirming the potential for sexual abuse. In her mind, if she could just make herself unattractive, then maybe her horrible experience wouldn't happen again, as if somehow she had done something wrong was to blame. She obviously wasn't. Sadly, in the process, however, her communication with her body was compromised. I knew she couldn't see it, but it was as clear as day. Just looking at the way her weight was distributed, as well as the muscle wasting or atrophy of her muscles, I could tell that there was other factors contributing to her inability to lose her body fat. So I decided to administer my non-empirical stress test. I touched her. I touched her neck. I touched the back of her arms or her triceps. And I touched her mid-back, her rear deltoid area. Each time I touched her, her body would retract and she would wince in pain. Now mind you, I was only touching, not even pressing. But as I thought, her body was completely inflamed and her muscles were being torn down by the overproduction of cortisol. You know, one of my favorite YouTube doctors is Dr. Eric Berg. The way he breaks down complex processes into digestible chunks is pretty awesome. Little wonder he has nearly 3 million subscribers. Look him up when you get a chance. Anyway, I want to play a clip from several years ago about why it's hard to turn off stress cortisol. Now, I'll return with my two cents and share with you how I helped Mary get beyond it. Hey, Dr. Berg here. In this short video, we're going to talk about this subject called cortisol and how to turn off cortisol. The first thing you need to know is that cortisol is made from the outside of the adrenal gland. This is the adrenal gland. You have two of them on top of the kidney. They look like this. So the outside of this is all gland tissue and cortisol is made by the outer part of that gland. Um, the inside of the gland is all nerve tissue. It makes neurotransmitters or hormone-like substances that are hormone-like because they travel communication-wise through the nervous system where hormones travel through the blood. That's the differentiation. So cortisol is made by the outside and the inside would be all the adrenaline. Okay, so adrenaline is a stress hormone too, right? Cortisol is a stress hormone. So the thing is like uh, a lot of people are stressed out and they seem to not be able to get rid of stress. They can't seem to turn off cortisol. And that's primarily because um, the, the adrenal gland only has an on switch. See, cortisol is a, a hormone that reacts to stress and adapts the body to stress states. Okay? And the same thing with adrenaline. It reacts to stress and it adapts the body to stress states. So if you're, a, if you're being chased by a tiger, for example, uh, you're going to have the heart rate go up. You're going to have the blood flow to your muscles. You're going to have a very awake brain and excessively you know, aware. And then you're going to have uh, higher blood pressure. You're going to have more adrenaline. You're going to have all these different things. But you're not going to have as much digestion or reproduction. So it's going to turn those things off. But what happens over time, and a lot of people don't know this, is that when they experience stress over their life, they think when they go through it, then the stress just goes away. No. All stress is accumulative. I have a machine that measures accumulating stress. And you can see in a body the huge relationship between the quantity of stress and then in present time, their body is stuck on and will not turn off because the adrenal only has an on switch. It doesn't have an off switch. Okay? So all stress accumulates. And it's also interesting to note that, and I'm going to just tell you, it's probably 100%, it's, it might be 99% of the time, but nearly 100% of the time you take autoimmune cases like rheumatoid and MS and, and lupus and all these different autoimmune diseases, it always happens after a stress event primarily a loss or some threat of loss or divorce or whatever. Why is that? Because a loss is a severe stress 
to the adrenal. It shocks the body even more than a physical stress. And the person can be stuck in it for years. As far as the physical body gets stuck in it, and then you're over here, but your body's still reacting down there, and then it turns on this autoimmune thing. So that's interesting. So we have this thing where we have the adrenals that get stuck on over time because of accumulated stress. It can be measured objectively. You can feel it subjectively just on how well you tolerate stress and how you deal with stress. If you can't tolerate stress um, and things get to you easily, irritate you easily, then we know the adrenal glands are on edge. Now there's a term for this called flight or fight mode. So when you're in flight or fight, you're in this mode where you're constantly either fighting or running away something. It's like, it's a stress state. So the flight or fight can be measured as well. And I can measure that on a test. And you can see how much flight or fight the person's in versus if it's normal or they're stuck in flight or fight. And a lot of people are stuck in this flight or fight from past stresses, okay? And it could, these stresses could be, you know, change of hormones, menopause. It could be physical stress, um, mental stress. It could be any type of stress at all. So, so that's really what's happening is that we have this hormone that's too high and this hormone that's too high because of the old stress that you don't see because it's stuck in the past. So they do all these tests and they can't find them because it's not showing up on a blood test, it's not showing up on uh, other tests, but it might be in blood pressure or pulse rate, but they, you have to use a very sensitive test to pick this up. And I use a test that measures this part of the adrenal. It's called the autonomic nervous system. This is all sympathetic nerve fibers. So we can measure that on a test um, that's called heart rate variability. Um, don't worry about the name, but it's just realize there is a test that can measure that. And when I look at people, I look at two things. One is how much stress that they have in their body. And number two, how much health or recovery reserve do they have as well? Because it measures both, both parts. And I find that it's a relationship. And when someone's usually in stress for long periods of time, they lose their health reserve, their recovery, their, um, their reserve to back onto. Because, you know, if you lose your recovery, then a little bit of stress really can affect you badly. But if you have good recovery and your stress it doesn't bother you as much because you have this buffer to fall back on. So the question is, what do we do to turn this off? Okay. And now one, one of the things that I found, it's very difficult to do this with pills and things like that. What I found you have to do is you have to manually turn the adrenal glands off. Now, what do you mean manually? Um, uh, like you, the adrenals are stuck way into the body. Well, there's techniques that um, basically work on other parts of this nervous system. Okay, it's called the sympathetic nervous system. And there is other parts of the nervous system that control the off switch, and that's called the parasympathetics. So that's another word. Parasympathetics means the part of the nervous system that turns things off because it controls rest and digestion. So in, in, inevitably, someone that's stressed usually has problems with resting and digestion. So um, if you look at the whole body and find out where these things are located, you can do techniques, um, acupressure without needles or massage on these locations of where these things are located in the body and create an incredible relaxation uh, effect, uh, effect that actually helps this part of the nervous system. So you're really working not on the gland per se, but you're working on the nervous system. You're increasing the flow of this electrical wire that's connected to the brain that won't turn off. It's like a switch. So I, what I did is I listed a series of videos below in the link that you can click on to see some of the techniques. There's a lot of them, but I'm just going to show you a couple that you can apply on your nervous system to help turn off this cycle. Okay, so I want to just give you a taste of this below, but there's a lot more we're going to talk about um, in future uh, videos. But I want to just explain some of the basics on what cortisol is and how it affects adrenals and what's really happening for people that are stuck in, st stuck in stress states. So I hope this helped and I will see you in the next video.
Now here are my two cents and feel free to keep the change. The most instructive thing I hope you take away from Dr. Berg is the fact that stress is not some zero sum game, meaning you are either stressed or you're not. Stress, like many other hormones in the body, accumulates over time in the body and can seriously affect your health. In Mary's case, not only did stress impact her health, it completely changed her relationship to her body and mind. For instance, Mary started to believe that being sore every day was natural, as if it were a byproduct of aging, and that somehow pop several Tylenol a day was normal. She tired easily and had no functional strength to speak of, but she also came up with a rationalization as to why that was. To make a long story short, I had Mary do some pretty unconventional things to help reestablish her body's trust and therefore change her. In last week's episode, I shared with you several steps you could take immediately to begin to emulsify your visceral fat. Make sure you listen to last week's episode to get those. I'll leave a link in the description box. But this week, I'm going to add another few very important steps. Whenever Mary got home, she immediately turned on the TV and never turned it off until she awakened the next morning. What she didn't realize was that the blue light from the TV is not some innocent nightlight, nor is listening to the news all night an effective de-stressing strategy. Blue light interrupts sleep patterns and can negatively impact the hypothalamus region of the brain. Now everyone knows that a lack of sleep is a prevalent issue in America, which is why Americans lead the world in the abuse of stress management drugs, as well as sleeping pills. But what you may not know is how much sleep deprivation has contributed to the obesity epidemic. So I had Mary put her TV on a sleep timer so that it would turn itself off at a specified hour. I also had Mary write something she liked about herself on a daily basis, then repeat it every morning out loud. We also said a positive affirmation before beginning each workout. I had her drink a half gallon of water every day. I had her put a pat of butter in her morning coffee. She began stretching every day. In fact, we stretched before before and after every workout together. Then she stretched every night before going to bed and every morning upon awakening. She walked for 15 minutes after dinner, which was always no later than 7 p.m. And finally, she went to bed an hour earlier every night. Now, after several weeks, I noticed a complete change, not only in her energy levels, but in her gait. She walked with more youthful energy and her walk was easier and her self-talk had completely changed. Instead of calling herself a loser whenever she couldn't complete a set, she instead began to think more like an athlete and say things like, I got this. When I asked her, did she need a timeout as if we were in a game? She replied almost indignantly, I'm not coming out of the game. See, now that's what I'm talking about. When she started adding more weight on the bar herself, I knew she had turned the corner. She was owning stuff. The moral of the story is this. You can't change your body until you change the way you feel, think, and communicate with it. Or you can drop some weight or lose a bit of body fat. Anyone can do that. But real change is expensive. It costs the body something. Your body is okay with negotiating such change because it knows that it can remain in negotiations forever. Like Mary, when you're ready, really ready, to initiate a lifestyle change, however, then and only then will your body purchase and invest in your changes rather than rent them. Dear friends, I wish above all things that you prosper just as your soul prosper. You've been listening to Urban X Real Talk Fitness Radio with your host Tiaja. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, Snapchat, as well as all of your other favorite social media. One last thing, show your support by hitting that subscribe button and sharing this podcast with your family and friends or download our app at tiajae.podbean.com. Finally, don't forget to stop through our flagship website at www.urbanxfitness.net where you will find our online stores, the Urban Experience Fit stores one and two. Once there, you can download our unique home and gym workout, dietary menus, as well as purchase some remarkably bold teas and spark your own revolution of self-care. Then head over to our small library of my hand-picked, personally endorsed nutritional products. Okay, got it? Okay, then get it. Until next week, as always, walk in health and peace.